So this is lecture seven, uh, looking at periodic trends um, and uh, some of the presentations you guys have done have gone very well. Uh, but I'm just going to add a little bit to each um, topic or each trend uh, that I want you to focus on. So um, like this picture, and again, you have access to all of my notes. Um, as you go from left to right, the size decreases. As you go down, the size increases. Uh, but not only are you going to have to know what the trend is, but you're going to have to know why. So um, the big idea with um, trends is going to be this idea of effective nuclear charge. Um, so you can't just use, I got more energy levels, therefore I have um, more uh, size, the size gets bigger uh, because you have more energy levels. Um, instead, you're going to have to describe it according to nuclear, effective nuclear charge. So we have two forces um, competing. So we have the attraction between the protons and the electrons, um, and then you also have, if electrons get too close to each other, uh, they repel. Uh, so what we have is something called Z effective. So the formula is Z effective is equal to Z um, minus S. And again, um, we are not going to do any calculations with this. It's more of understanding the concept. So Z is, of course, the nuclear charge or the number of protons that we're dealing with in the nucleus. And S is what we call the shielding constant. So again, the shielding constant is going to be the more um, important discussion here uh, going forward. So we have a shielding constant uh, due to... Um, the inner electrons shielding the outer valence electrons from the nucleus. So with that shielding, what happens is the proton doesn't feel the electrons on the outermost um, energy levels, so therefore they don't get pulled in as much, um, so you don't have a pull-in force as strong. So typically what you see are S and P orbitals are effective at shielding, um, so they do a very good job of, and again, those are always going to be those inner core electrons are going to be S and P orbitals, um, so they are very good at shielding. So that means you tend to have what we call larger atoms if you have um, a good shielding effect, okay? Because again, the shielding prevents the electrons from dealing with those protons, so it doesn't get cinched in, okay? Um, and a good thing that your book mentions is it's kind of like a lampshade. Um, uh, so again, the more lampshades you have, the less light that comes through. While D and also Fs are not very good shielders, uh, so therefore they make it a smaller atom because it really does not prevent the protons from feeling uh, those electrons, so therefore um, they are, uh, tend to be a little bit smaller. So in uh, my notes that I have given you, where did it go? So in my notes, I provided this to you, and it might have been in somebody else's presentation as well, so I'm not saying that it wasn't already discussed. Um, but um, as you go from left to right in that second period, uh, you will see that the effective nuclear charge keeps getting bigger and bigger. Again, because you have the S and the P uh, shielding, <clears throat> and so then those outermost electrons don't feel those protons. So as you go from left to right, the effective nuclear charge increases, so therefore the size decreases because of that. Okay. So when we are talking about um, size of atoms, um, we can generally say as you decrease across a period, um, it, excuse me, atomic size decreases as you go across the period. Um, it is due to increase, increase of effective nuclear charge, um, so the atoms get smaller. Well, as you go down a group, you can't quite say the same, you can't use the effective, it doesn't work as well for our discussions. Uh, so, but you can say that as you keep going down a group, you get more and more S and P orbitals. So since you have that increase in S and P orbitals, those atoms are going to get bigger because again, um, it doesn't have much in terms of um, 
because of that shielding, you end up getting much bigger atoms because those outermost electrons do not feel the protons. So for each one of these um, trends, I am going to expect you to know some what we call exceptions to the rule. And so the exceptions are going to be, again, um, some ones that you could kind of guess about um, just by understanding um, repulsion and also attractive forces. So helium tends to be bigger than hydrogen. So if you actually look at their um, picometers, uh, it's about 128 to 37. You don't need to know the numbers, but understand that a filled orbital, you have more what we call electron repulsion. Uh, so that's why you see that um, uh, with uh, some of the noble gases, they tend to be a little bit bigger than their neighboring atom. So you will see exactly the same thing with neon versus fluorine. And again, you could take out your Flynn periodic table and find uh, some other exceptions. I just think these are pretty easy to know or memorize, um, again, due to the repulsion. And then there's one that I want you to know for the groups. And again, if you find something else you like, aluminum versus gallium, when you look at it on the periodic table. So if we look here at where aluminum and gallium are, Okay, aluminum and gallium. Aluminum is in the third period. This is in the fourth period. You have a little bit um, smaller as you go down, which is not the trend. It usually gets bigger. And that is because you start to involve the d orbital. Um, that's the fourth energy level, uh, excuse me, the fourth period. That's where you involve the three Ds. Um, and so you have a little bit, uh, you have less shielding. So therefore it kind of cinches in the size. The other trend I wanna talk about in this video is ionic size as well. Um, it's exactly the same trend as atomic size, so really I'm not going to spend too much time on it, and probably the presentations covered some of this. Um, cations are always smaller than the uh, a neutral atom. Anions are always bigger. And do know when you are comparing um, ions, you are only going to be comparing what we call the cations to each other, and then the anions to each other. You're not going to mix and match because it does depend upon where you are on the periodic table who's bigger and not. Um, so again, um, you will have a um, color copy of this to kind of help you. There's many different uh, versions out there. But the one thing I do want you to know about um, ionic size is something called isoelectronic ions. Um, so here is a pretty common example. If I look at oxygen um, as an oxide, fluoride, neon, and then sodium ion and magnesium ion, these all are going to have the same number of electrons. They have 10 electrons, okay? But they are gonna have different sizes. So again, electrons are going to determine mostly the size, but depending upon the number of protons. So if you look at oxygen, it has eight protons, nine, 10, 11, and 12 as you go from left to right. So what tends to happen, because you have 12 protons here and only 10 electrons of magnesium ion, you have a, a smaller, uh, size compared to sodium ion, compared to neon, fluoride, and oxide. So again, the more um, protons you have, the smaller the isoelectronic ion is going to be. 